Hello everyone, in this video I will teach you how to move or translate a force from one point to another. Some of you might immediately stop me and ask me the following question. Why is this topic so important? Why is it important to learn to move or translate a force from one point to another? Here is the answer. This technique is very important for analyzing static equilibrium of rigid bodies. For example, we often want to move forces acting at different points to a single point and to compute the resultant of these forces once they are moved to that point. In this case, and in many other cases, we use this nice technique. Also, this technique is physically intuitive since from our everyday experience it is obvious that the action of the force on the body at certain point is equivalent to action of the same force at another point plus an additional moment. Before I start with the explanations I have to mention the following. First of all, I created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given below. And secondly, if you like this video and if you like the other videos that I create, please press the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. Consider this figure. This figure represents an object in 2D plane and at the point Q we have the force F acting on this object. So this force F is localized. It acts on the point Q. Now, our goal is to move the force F from the point Q to the point X. That's our goal where x can actually be an arbitrary point can for example be over here or can be over here here you should stop for a second and think about what i said i said to move the force now from physical point of view we can now move the force from point q to x right because there is a physical force acting at the point Q. How can I move the force from the point Q to the point X? I cannot do that, right? However, from a thematical point of view, I can do that. So, I can replace the action of this force F by the action of something acting at the point X and something else acting at the point X. That is, from a mathematical point of view, I can pretend that this force doesn't exist anymore and that I have something acting on the point X. And that's something, and that's something else, what I said, is shown over here. So, I'm able, from a mathematical point of view, to replace the action of this force F by the action of the force F that has a parallel action line to the, our original force and the same intensity and direction and by an additional moment that is equal to F times the shortest distance between the action lines. And this is the moment of the couple as you will see later. So, my original situation, right, is equivalent to this situation. And even from the physical point of view, this force acting at this point will have the same effect on the body as the force over here and the moment end. So that's the beauty of statics and mathematics. And this theorem is one of the most beautiful theorems 
that I've learned while studying statics as a student, as an undergraduate student. Once I saw this theorem, I was starting to think more deeply about forces, about moments, about how they can be replaced, what are the equivalent forces, what are the equivalent moments, etc. Okay, here's the main idea again. The main idea is to replace the force with the force and the moment whose action on the body is equivalent to the action of the original force. Now, to implement this idea, we have to recall this concept. We have to remember the concept of equivalence of two force systems. Now, two force systems are equivalent if they result in the identical resultant force and the identical resultant moment. So, to illustrate this, imagine that you have a rigid body and we have two versions of this rigid body. These are identical rigid bodies. And we have one force system acting on this rigid body. Okay, let's say that we have three forces acting at three points. And let's say, let us say that we have another system of forces acting on this body. Let's say we can have five forces acting. Now, the question is, when are these two systems equivalent? The answer is, these two systems are equivalent if they result in the identical resultant force and the identical resulting moment. So, if we can represent this system and this system by a single force, a single resultant force acting at some point, and a single resulting moment, MR. Here I'm representing everything in plane, so for me now moments are just arrows, however we know that moments are basically vectors. So these two systems are equivalent, these, this system of forces, let's call this A system of forces, and the system of forces B are equivalent if both of them can be represented by this situation, by this graph over here. That is, they result in the identical resultant force and the identical resultant moment. So, basically, this implies that the equivalent systems can be made and can be represented by single force, resultant force, and a single moment. Also, if we have two equivalent systems, then we have infinite number of equivalent systems because we can basically decompose this resultant force and this resultant moment in an infinite number of ways. That is, there is an infinite number of possibilities of decomposing this resultant force and this resulting, resulting moment. Okay, so let us apply the equivalence principle in order to solve this problem. Here is my original situation. I have the force F acting at the point Q and I want to move this force to the point X. Okay, now let us apply the equivalence principle. So, I can add two forces, the force over here and the force over here, that have the same intensity as the force F, whose action line is parallel to the action line of the force F, right? And I can basically assume that these two forces have opposite directions or opposite signs. Now, 
from mechanical point of view and from a mathematical point of view and moreover from physical point of view the situation over here is equivalent to the situation over here well i just added here two forces that counteract each, each other and they cancel each other so in reality they do not exist right so this force acting on this system has the same effect as the action of these three forces acting on this body. Now, what's the next step? Well, I can observe that this force over here and my original force over here create a couple. So these two forces create a couple. And I can replace these two forces by a moment of a couple. So instead of having these two forces, I can just erase them. And I can add the moment of the couple that you can see over here. And I achieved my goal. Look what is happening over here. I don't have the force F acting at the point Q. There is no force over here. I have moved my force F from my point Q to my point X. And in addition to that force, I added a moment of the couple. And the moment of the couple is equal to the original force times the distance between the action lines of the two forces. And I've I've, I have achieved my goal. I achieved my goal because the action of this force F on this body is equivalent to the action of the force F at the point X and an additional moment of the couple that is equal to F times D. Okay, so let us now repeat this again for a slightly different example. Consider this example. I have a circle in the plane, and let us assume that we have, for example, a point A over here and the force F. And let's say that we want to move this force F to another point. Here I'm sketching the same body. Let's say that we want to move the force F to this point B. Okay, so what is the procedure? The first step that's shown over here is basically to construct the action line of my force F. So here is the action line of the force F. Then I will translate this action line and translate it until it reaches or it passes through the point B. So here is my translated action line. Now it passes through the point B. Then here at the point B, I can add two forces that cancel each other. This is my first force. It has the same intensity as the force F. And I add a counteracting force, F, that again, that has the same intensity as my original force F. Okay, so these two cases are equivalent from the statics and mechanics point of view because nothing changes. The effect of this force on this body is the same as the effect of these three forces on this body because F and minus F cancel each other. So this is minus F. Okay, now here's the final step. The final step now is to simply erase the force at the point A. So we don't have the, the force at point A and to replace this force by a couple created by 
f, my original f, and minus f. So instead of f and minus f, over here, at the point B, or around the point B, I will have a moment of the couple. So here's my moment of a couple, and it's equal to f, the intensity of the original force f, times the distance between the two action lines. Okay, now I can safely erase my point f, and what remains? I have the force f that's being translated to the point b. And we have solved the problem. So this situation is equivalent to this situation. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much and have a nice day.